Hi everyone. Now that we're done making our bubble person artwork, we are going to make another kind of bubble person that shows movement, but this time, instead of it being a flat painting or drawing, we're going to be making a sculpture of a bubble person. I have one that I made last year right here. So you can see it kind of is like the bubble person that I drew on my painting, but it is a sculpture, which means it's a 3D piece of artwork. Um, it's 3D because I can see it pops out this way, this way, and this way. So when I turn it, I can always see it. If I were to just look at my bubble person on my painting, this does not pop out, right? If I turn it, I can't see it anymore because it's flat. Now this bubble person, sculpture that I made last year, I used wire and plaster and paint and a little bit of modeling clay on the foot. But I'm guessing not everyone has plaster and wire and paint at home. So I'm going to show you a different way to do this. I'm going to be using pipe cleaner. You should have gotten two pipe cleaners in your um, box of school supplies and you came to pick up your supplies at school. And then what I'm going to use to cover the pipe cleaners might change. So I could, I'm going to use tape, but if you don't have tape, you might have string and glue that you could cover it with, or maybe you have beads that you could stick along your pipe cleaner. That could make a pretty cool effect too. And then I'm going to use this little bit of leftover modeling clay I have to stick the foot in, but if you don't have modeling clay, you could just tape the foot down to something so your person stands. All right, I'm going to start with one pipe cleaner and this first pipe cleaner I'm going to use to make the head and the arms. I'm not going to cut it, I'm just going to bend it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bend it in half so the two ends come down next to each other like this. Then I'm going to cross them near the top so I have a small loop up here. This is going to be my head. And I'm trying to make that loop in the middle so that my arms are about the same length. It's okay if they are um, a little bit different in size, but I want to make them close to the same. Then I'm going to twist the arms so that they stay. And I should have a shape like this. This is going to be the head and the arms. Let me do it one more time. The fun thing about pipe cleaners or any kind of wire is that you can undo anything you've done before. You might have a little kink in it, but that's okay. So I'll show you one more time. I bring the two ends down together at the bottom. Then I cross the ends so that there is a loop near the top. Oops. <laughs> and then I kind of pinch it with one hand and with my other hand, I twist the arms. So now they kind of switched places and that made it so that they stay. Now I'm going to set this piece aside and I'm going to do the exact same thing with my second pipe cleaner. Um, and this time, this is going to be the body and the legs. So the same thing though, I'm bringing the two ends down together. I'm crossing them so that there is a loop. Now this time the loop is going to be the body. So I could make the loop a little bit bigger since our bodies are bigger than our head. And then I'm going to twist so those legs kind of switch places and now it stays. So you can see if I take my first piece and I put it above my second piece, I have what looks like a person. Now they are not attached, but I am going to be attaching mine with tape. So I can just tape these two pieces together. But I wanted to show you if you don't have tape, another choice you could do so that these stay together. And this is what it is. I'm gonna hold them next to each other like this. And then I'm going to take one arm, whatever arm looks a little bit longer, and I'm going to take that arm and bring it through the belly and back up to the side. And then it's attached. If you want it to be a little more sturdy, you could do the same thing with the other arm. Bring it through the belly and then back around to where it came from. Now it's all attached as one person. But if you don't want to do that last step, you could just tape them together. Although that did work pretty well. Look at that. Okay, now I'm going to cover mine in tape. But like I said, if you don't have tape, you could put a little bit of glue along your person 
and you could wrap string around it. Um, wrapping something around it just makes it so you can change the color. So maybe I put like a blue string where the shirt would go. Um, and it also covers up, like right now there's a hole through the person's belly and through their head. We don't want that. So if I were to wrap this string around, I could cover up that hole. But I'm actually gonna take this string off and I'm gonna use take, it's a little bit faster. Um, so I'm gonna take Okay, string is off. Oh, my legs came undone, let's fix this. All right, I'm gonna tilt you down so you can see better. All right. Now I'm going to rip a few pieces of tape. I like to have the pieces ready. And I'm using this thick duct tape. I think I'm going to rip it in half. It's a little bit easier for me to use these thinner pieces. And then I'm just sticking them on my table right here. All right, so ripping a few pieces. Then when I'm ready, I'm going to take this piece of tape. I'm going to first stick it on so there's just a little bit popping up above the pipe cleaner. And I'll press it down like this. And then for this one, I'm going to wrap it around the arm. And I'm trying to hold it on an angle. See how it's, a, um, it's kind of like a diagonal? This way, as I go, it gets farther down the arm. And this makes my ball person a little bit thicker too, since the pipe cleaner is so thin. Then I kind of attach it. I've got one arm done. When I go to do the body, I need a few pieces for the body. I want to make sure I don't pull too much or it's going to make my body too thin. There we go. See how it's starting to come along. All right. I'm going to pause and I will show you when I'm done. I'll show you when I'm done taping the whole thing. All right, I just finished covering my whole pipe cleaner person with tape. Now, I it was tough to get the head to look round, so see how my, my head kind of looks square? So what I'm going to do is use a pair of scissors and just trim the tape corners that are up there that make that look like a square so that the head can look round or closer to round again. And the tape's pretty easy to cut. The pipe cleaners are not, but I'm not cutting the pipe cleaners. Okay, that looks better to me. All right, I also forgot to say, if you don't have string or tape, you could also cover your person in paper. If you cut thin strips of paper um, and wrap them around and put glue at the end, you could also try that. If you only have really thick paper, it might help to get the paper a little bit wet. It might make it bend a little more and then either tape or glue the ends down. Um, but here is my person. I really like the way it looks all red like this. Now the next step is to make it look like it's moving, just like how we wanted to draw our bubble people looking like they were showing um, movement. We want this person to look like they're doing a movement too. So just like before, you can look at a picture of someone doing a movement. You could have someone in your family do a movement and you look at them, but we're going to want to look at every part of the body and see how it's moving so that we can really make this person look like they're moving too. Um, remember I did this one, shooting a basketball. I think I'll do this one running. So I'm gonna have their body leaning forward. I'll have one leg come up and see how I can bend it like this since there's a pipe cleaner in there. One leg will be back. And then, sometimes I have to remind myself, one, one. Okay. one leg is forward, the opposite arm will be forward and the other arm will be back. All right, so it's like my person is running or leaping really quickly now. If you don't like the movement, one of the fun things about these sculptures is you could change it. Maybe I decided, no, I want this person doing ballet. So I'm going to have them have their arms up in the air. Maybe they have um, their leg up about to do a kick. We'll do that. 
then I want my sculpture to stand. You're gonna have to get creative with this. If you only have tape, you could probably use some tape and rip it into small pieces and then put those small pieces on the bottom of the foot and tape it to the ground. Or if you do have some modeling clay, this is like Play-Doh, but it doesn't dry out. So it's a little bit sticky and it would stick to a table um, or wherever you set it. So I'm going to stick my, the foot that would be on the ground in this pose. Oh, I'm having a little trouble. I'm gonna make an indent with my pen first, I think. And then I will put the foot in that indent and then kind of squeeze it up around the foot. Then, table here, I am going to press it into the table so it's sticking. And now my sculpture is standing. Well, that looks like it's, there we go. And I've got a sculpture. So as a reminder, a sculpture is a 3D piece of artwork. So it is not flat, it pops out in three directions. Um, we're going to be making a sculpture that shows a person showing a movement. We're using those two pipe cleaners that were in your um, bag or box of supplies you picked up and then covering those pipe cleaners in either tape, string, paper. Um, you can get creative with that step and then posing your sculpture so that it looks like it's doing a movement. When you turn your artwork in this week, I want to see a picture or a video of your person, and I want you to type a sentence or two telling me what movement you chose. So my sentence would say, I created a sculpture that shows someone doing ballet. And that's it. I will see you next week.